All right, welcome back to Lightning GIS. In this episode, we're going to discuss one of the topics that I have seen um, cause the most frustration with students and other GIS users over my many years of teaching GIS concepts, and that is file namings. So what we're gonna go through are some tips, tricks, and rules to live by when it comes to naming files in GIS. Before we get started, I would just like to mention that there are two other uh, episodes related to this topic and that's sort of the an episode about the file types and relationships to data sets for GIS. Um, you can check that episode out and then the other one is an overview of the workflow for importing data into GIS. All right with that let's get started. Let's talk about file names. GIS is really picky about file names. Um, your file names for GIS, and this includes the whole path, not just the file name, but everything back to the root folder. C colon slash, directory name slash, directory name slash, all the way out to file name and extension. No spaces anywhere. No weird characters. What I mean by weird characters is basically shift in any number, so exclamation mark, at symbol, hashtag, all those things. None of those. And file and folder names should not have leading numbers. So don't put a number at the beginning of a file name. You can have numbers within the file name or a folder name, but not at the start. Um, it, that one, that last one, leading numbers, usually it doesn't cause a problem, but there are some tools in GIS that will just totally crash because, because of that, so just avoid it. So let's go over some examples here. Um, here we have a full path name, C colon slash GIS data, and then a folder inside that one called states, and a folder inside there called Missouri, state highway, and then a file called mo roads dot shape. This is perfect. No spaces. We've got an underscore here. Here we just squish two words together, together to get rid of this space and all that stuff. Right? But it's perfect. No leading numbers, no spaces, no weird characters. All right, let's look at this example. Here we left the space out of the folder name. There's no spaces in the actual file name, but there's a space in this folder name. Uh-oh. This is pull your hair out. Why is GIS crashing on me? Why won't it work? It's because of that space right there. Once in a while you can get away with it. There are some parts of GIS, some tools that can handle spaces and file names, but not all of them. And even I don't know which ones allow it and which ones don't, so the best thing is just avoid it no spaces, no char weird characters, no leading numbers. All right, let's look at this one. Here are the spaces in the file name. Once again, it doesn't matter whether it's in the file name or the folder. If there's a space anywhere in this path, it's going to be a problem for GIS. And the last one, no spaces, but we've got 2020, so we've got leading numerals in our file name. Once again, sometimes you can get away with this, Sometimes you can't, so it's better just never to do it so that you don't look frustrated like this emoji guy over here. All right, now let's talk about the file names, not just the, the names themselves, but we want those names to be concise but descriptive. And this isn't just advice. This is something I'm going to require of you. Um, I'm going to be troubleshooting, helping you figure out. You're going to come to me. I can't figure out why my project's not working. I'm doing everything right, just like you said to do it, and it keeps crashing. Um, and I'm going to start to look at your data. I'm going to start to look at your project file. I'm going to start to follow things. And we want descriptive names. I don't want to have to open up every file in your map to see what it is. So if you've got this cryptic name down here, HUC 8202008816, who knows what that is? It doesn't tell anybody anything about where it is, what it is, but this tells me a lot. Okay, so this Huck 8 is some type of watershed. In fact, it's a major watershed. Um, and it's probably in Missouri based on the way this data structure is organized with this set of folders. We've got a Missouri folder and inside that's a hydro folder, a watersheds folder, and then this watersheds shapefile. So I didn't have to open that file up. I have a general idea of what it is by just looking at it. All right, so it's concise. So there's some abbreviations here like Mo for Missouri, Hydro for Hydrology, but still I can tell what this is by reading that path name. That's the way it should be. This one, no good. This one, very good. All right, now, I said concise and descriptive. 
The descriptive is important and so is the concise because Windows has a 260 character limit for every file name and that file name includes that full path back to the root directory. So now both of these file names here are for the same shapefile but I just sort of named them in different ways and different folder structures. You can see this one is relatively short, this one's relatively long. Now both of them are less than 260 characters, so these two examples would work just fine in GIS. That's not the problem. Um, what I want to point out though is that by spelling out Missouri instead of abbreviating it, instead of abbreviating hydro, and then adding some extra folders in here, you're creating all these extra layers which makes that path longer and longer. And trust me, as you accumulate and obtain more and more GIS data, and you try to file this in a logical way in your GIS data folder file structure, it doesn't take long before all of a sudden you're finding that some of those file names and the path that goes with them exceed that 260 character limit. And then you've got all kinds of problems because you're going to have to either change names to shorten them or move that to someplace else. And if you are pointing to any of that data that's being moved in any other MXDs that you've done in the past, as soon as you move that, all those other files get broken too. So it's important to sort of be concise. All right, so a few rules to remember about file names. No spaces, no leading numbers, and no weird characters. If you do those things, it should keep you from having to pull your hair out over GIS, at least for this reason. All right, um, I just want to take a quick moment to remind you about the other videos in our Organizing Your GIS Data series. Um, the first one was on file types and data management in GIS, and the other one is an overview of the workflow for importing data into GIS. Check those out. Thank you.